So I'll just quickly talk about when you join the rows together because we've got our circles that are filling up the whole space with just the seam allowance exposed. Just make sure when you join your two strips together, and these two are my bottom two strips here, uh, just make sure that when you do your, your seams and things that you are stitching or not stitching onto the actual circle, which, which you can do often by feel or just double checking that you've still got your quarter inch that you need because you want the whole circle to be exposed. You don't want it disappearing into a seam if you can possibly help it. So that's just back to your quarter inch, change back to your quarter inch foot if you've changed your foot on your sewing machine. And uh, then we can get on with joining up all our, all our rows and guess what, then some quilting. So I'm just doing my quarter inch seam allowance joining together. So I'm just showing you briefly that I've, with this quarter inch seam just coming up close to the circle as I was talking about before see exactly what I mean. So come up close, you don't want to stitch on the circle but just right next to and then just continue on with your quarter inch just keeping an eye out for the one behind when you get there as well. If you've got it in a quarter of an inch as you should have you'll find that there won't be a problem anyway but I just thought I'd mention it just as something to keep an eye out for. So I've got my quilt top together, I've done all my applique, I've joined all my rows up, I'm ready to go and baste it all ready for quilting. So we've done all the rows, as you can see it's very similar to the one up behind me. These fabrics are lovely, we have included a couple of solid colours that weren't actually part of the range, the grey and the yellow, the grey that I've used for the bird. Um, and I just think it all complements each other so nicely. So I'm going to go away and baste it now and then I'll show you how I've quilted it. So I've put my quilt top together, I've pin basted my quilt and I've actually started my quilting. I'm going to free motion quilt, I'm not so uh, good at doing the straight line work, I quite like all the wonky stuff. Um, but I'm, I'm doing some, I'm actually going to meander this one. This one here I've done some sort of wiggly lines in between these little birds and some other little wiggly lines here. However, this one I thought I'd just do slightly differently. I have done a little circle design in between the circles here, and I thought, well, I would do the same sort of thing here, but I'm going to meander the rest of the quilt. So what I've done is I've gone throughout the whole quilt and I've just outlined, just free motion, about an eighth of an inch away from each circle, all of the circles and the yellow circle and also the inner circle. So there's just a little stitching line that comes in around there, just away from the applique. And I think, to me, that holds it out quite nicely. That's probably enough quilting. Where I've got the bird in here, I've also outlined just outside of the bird as well. Otherwise, between all the circles, I'm doing this band with some little quilted circles in it. So I've just left one circle to outline and one little band just to show you how I've done that in case you want to do the same thing. You may, of course, want to do something completely different. So I'm going to go around this circle here, then I'm going to continue on into this little band with the little circles in it. So I'll show you how I've done that. Um, I haven't marked anything, but I have found that I don't particularly need to because I'm going to use a little piece of masking tape to help me with the straightness. But Initially, I'm going to just go right around this circle here. So I've got my free motion sewing foot on, I've dropped my feed teeth out of the way, and this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to start my circle around about here. So I'm just away from the circle, hopefully you can see all this. And I'm just going to just, just gently take it right the way around. And that might wobble just a little bit, but I won't be worrying too much about that. Now I'm meeting up with some quilting. I have already done this little band here, so I'm just going to overlap over that little bit of stitching that I did there. And continue on round.
just just about back to where I started from now. Now I could take the, it out but I often prefer not to stop and start too much with the thread ends and I've just got a piece of masking tape here that I've been using to do all these pieces so it's getting a little bit less sticky than it was and I'm just going to put that between the two circles pretty much up the center line where you had finger pressed that line when we were positioning the circles and you may still be able to see that finger press line but either way you can pretty much see normally you, you might put it on before you put it in the machine perhaps I'm, I'm just trying to be a bit fast and put it all in together here so because I'm still on the quilt with the machine I'm now just going to back up to where that tape is and I'm going to go backwards along the not on the tape but next to the tape back to where my stitching line is around this larger circle and I'm just going to go along a couple of stitches and then come back again just so I get a double line of sewing there and then I'm going to pull that tape just out of the way for the moment and go along that circle edge again to about where I think the tape will come back to. So this tape is not very sticky now because I've been using it for each piece. It's often better if it's not too sticky because it's harder to move. However, it's probably just about ready for a replacement, but as I'm at the end. So I'm, again, I'm going to go up next to the tape all the way back oops, to the next circle. And again, come down so that there's a double line of sewing there. Now I don't need that piece of tape anymore. So what I'm going to do here is just come along again. So I'd run over the same line of stitching sometimes a couple of times in order to get to places rather than stopping and starting all the time. So now I'm just going to do these little circly things that I do. I'm going to go around. So pretty much from stitching line to stitching line and then I'm going to go over the next one. And then I'm going to go into the next circle. And then this one, same thing, the last one. Nothing has to fit absolutely exactly because this is a free motion quilt. Now, the other thing I might do, because I'm still on the machine and because I'm now on my very last one, um, I have done all of those now. I would do all of, when I'm quilting, when I'm doing some kind of filling background things, I do all the sort of fancy or outlining or anything like that first. And so that was my last little bit. So now I can do all my background, which as I said, I'm going to meander. Um, so I'm ready to, to just start meandering now. I don't actually have to take that out of the machine. Just take a couple of pins out to get them out of the way. And I'm just going to move right into my meandering. So, and I'll keep it a reasonable size so that I can get that all over the quilt. And next time you see this quilt, it will be all quilted.